by requesting somebody to read from the book of Exodus 23. And let us see what verse 25 tells us. Shall serve the Lord. You shall serve the Lord, your God, your God, and He shall bless thy bread. And the Amen. Lord shall bless your bread and thy water. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You shall serve. You shall serve the Lord, and the Lord will bless your bread and your water. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. The Book of Leviticus. Which happened to be our first lesson, 26, 3 to 13. It's filled with the promises of God, the blessings of God, with a condition. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, God has no business forcing us to receive from Him. We, on the other hand, had a responsibility and the obligation to receive from God. Because God made us. After God made us, He made us perfect. But because of sin, we deviated from the ways of God. And that is one of the reasons why we are going through all we are going through to receive from God. Hallelujah. But our God, who had promised that he will bless us bountifully, has not changed. God has not left his throne. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said to the Israelites, If you will return to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now God told the Israelites, he requested the Israelites to return to them, not because God needed anything from them, not because God needed them, hallelujah, hallelujah, but for the promise of God to come to pass, hallelujah. hallelujah. God's mercy is so abundant. Leviticus 26, 3 to 13. Then I will give you rain in due season. Now, 3. If ye walk in my status Hallelujah. and keep my commandments, if you keep my commandments and do them, and do them, then I will give you rain in due season. The Lord is saying these are the conditions. This is one of the conditions. Hallelujah. That I will do for you what I have promised to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Land shall yield an increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, just for the sake of time, uh, mommy. Yes. Now, the Lord is saying that He shall increase our field, our trees. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In other words, whatever you lay your hands upon, you are bound to prosper. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With the understanding that you have to do God's will. God does not play games. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the word says we are created in the image of God. God is spirit. As a result, we have to worship Him in spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We walk by faith and not by sight. If you believe that God, who said that he will bless you and he will make your land fire, he will make you rich. Hallelujah. If you believe in that, there will be, be no reason for you to doubt God at any point in time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It went further to say, I will give peace to your land. I will give peace to you. All your enemies, they can be as many as the sands of the seashore. If you have God on your side... There's no reason for you to be afraid. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because we're all children of authority. If you pronounce it, if you say, say that you depart from me, so shall it be. Hallelujah. Amen. It is but you have to be in line with God. You cannot walk in and say that you're a child of God. Then after the service is over, you seek help elsewhere. God 
does not dilly dally. God is a straight walking and a straight talking God. If you walk into any environment that you call a church, and you see the pastor or the priest do something in the church that is totally in line with Christ, and outside you see that pastor or preacher, that pastor or priest do something else, I would suggest you walk out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because you see, the way God operates, God operates in such a miraculous way. Hence, he said, the secret of the Lord is with the Lord, and it's only revealed to those whom he wants to reveal the secret to. God speaks to us in various forms, in various ways. But we have to begin to identify when the true voice of the Lord is speaking to us. You don't have to jump up. The Spirit don't have to move you. Hallelujah. The Lord speaks to your heart. And you and I will both know if we belong to Christ or not. And I tell people all the time, let us forget about the physical aspect of worship and let us look into the spiritual depths. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now physically, I can, be, I can present myself as the most pious person. But spiritually, who am I? It is no secret, it is a known fact that in any Christian environment that you are in, there are all kinds of creatures in that environment. You have snakes, you have goats, you name it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But because God is very compassionate, He sent Jesus Christ to come and redeem us. By Him coming to redeem us, He made a pathway for us to come back to the family of Christian, to the family of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now, once you see that invitation, are you willing to accept that invitation and become fully, fully, fully accepted. There are no two ways about it. Now we'll address that in the second lesson. God, being a humble God, He said, I will respect you. Like I said, God has no business saying so. Because God owns everything on this earth. So for God to say that he will respect you, he will respect me. To me, I feel that says a volume. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says a volume. A God who created us, God who can take life, God who gives life, says he will bless you, he will respect you. Isn't that what? A reason why we should con continue that constantly giving praises. But some of us, we just take it for granted. I woke up this morning, it is my power. Who told you it's your power? I went to bed last night. I made it in life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you know how many people that thought that they made it in life? Yet, when it was time for them to give account of how they made it in life, it was zero. We don't know how blessed we are. If only we know how blessed we are, when you get up in the morning, the first thing you have to do is to thank God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And ye shall eat from old store. In preparation for new. Yeah, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, God had laid it, He had laid a foundation, He had made, He had prepared it. We just have to tap into it. Like one of my elders said one day, he said, People come into Celestial Church and they be taking the blessing, they be taking the blessing, 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 blessing. It is so true. 
Now, we don't have to begin to count our blessings based on physical blessings. Our blessings don't have, always have to be tangible. You have your sight, it's a blessing. You can hear, it's a blessing. You can walk, it's a blessing. And the list goes on and on and on and on. Even there are some people that have sick beds. That they look at others. They have reason to thank God. I will never forget there was a young lady. I think she was about 34 years on that threshold in a third, between 30 and 34. She happened to be at the same room with my wife at the hospital. She had cancer. And the doctors just gave her like a few weeks to leave. So meanwhile, my wife was crying. Oh, what am I going to do with my kids? If I die today, what's going to happen? Yeah, she, she kept on and on. And I looked at this young lady. She was so vibrant. So happy as if she wasn't sick. We found out that the cancer that she had had spread through all her body. And the doctor gave her just a few weeks to live. So the morale behind this story is that she said that yeah, she has nothing to do. It's beyond her control. That's the way the good Lord wants it. But if that was to be some of us, we would be speaking blasphemy of God. Why did God do this to me? Why did God do this? Why did God do this? The blessings of God as God has promised, if you keep his statutes, you keep God's commandments, I keep his commandments and do his will. Surely the God that I serve, the God that I believe in, at the time that you are in the most need, he will come through. Because God had never failed us. So if God had never failed us, why is it so difficult for us to doubt, to believe that He is not the God that we should doubt? I have backache. The doctor does not know what medication to give to me to cure me. As a result, God does not exist. That should not even come from the mouth of a Christian. And God is also assuring that He is our God. If God is our true God, with the assurance that God is giving to us, why can't we go to God as a child will go to his parents or her parents? And that is one of the reasons why it is very, very important when you when you pray. Reference the Bible. God, you did it for Isaac. This is my time. Do it for me. You delivered Moses. This is my time. Deliver me. If you pray like that, I am pretty sure that God will speedily answer you. Amen. It's communication. I can stand here and pray, 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 pray. Do you know how many billions of people are in the world that are saying the same prayer that I'm saying? 
if God had to attend to every single one of us at the same time, the list is long. But God had ordained those special people. And that is one of the reasons why you see in the of church especially, there are certain prayers that it contains. Except we don't lie to ourselves. I have witnessed it. I have seen it. Where prayer is going on, the action is being performed almost immediately. So if God can do it then, I believe God will always do it. Amen. We just have to find a way to communicate with God. So every one of us that are sitting in this heaven are going to live. We have a special assigned angel to every one of us. Some people know the names of their angels. Some don't. If through the grace of God you know the name of your angel, in every difficult situation that you might be in, once you call that name of angel, that's assigned to do that, that, that's assigned to you. It bypasses all of that request and presents your situation to God directly. God is a miraculous God. And the Israelites call God all kinds of names. Because of his miracles, the Israelites decide to call him Jehovah Jenny. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you know how God operates, you will just give off everything and let God take full control of your life. Every single day we are still growing. If there's any person says that he or she have grown and reached that level, spiritual level whereby there's no growth. You should question that person. But we have to learn to pay attention to when the Lord is speaking to us. So that we follow his instructions and do what he is asking of us. So his promises will manifest. Amen. Revelation 14. I'll try as much as possible to paraphrase that. It's all about the meaning of Christ with John. He tested what the Romans, he knew what John was doing so much that they sent him to a prison camp. And that was when the Lord revealed himself to him. And so John showed John about a vision of things to come in the future. First book of Revelation. Let's quickly go into that. I mean, at the first chapter of Revelation. And if anybody sees 9 through 20. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the hour that is called Patmos, for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and heard behind me a great voice. You heard a great voice, and this was somebody that was sent to suffer. Because the Romans, they couldn't stand it, they hated his gods. They sent him to prison at Patmos. But because Lord had known and seen 
who John is, he revealed certain things to John. Continue. As of a trumpet, say, I am Alpha and Omega, mm -hmm. the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in the book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thytra, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And the, in the midst of the, of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and got about the paths with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. Hallelujah. 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 The word says, God is in Christ, and Christ is in God. God. Yes. So now this description of Christ that we can relate to is a full picture of God being painted. Hallelujah. 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 Christ, on the other hand, sat by God. Whatever is pronounced by Christ is ordained by God. Amen. Whatever is ordained by God is pronounced by Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the word says, no one coming unto the Father but through Christ. And that is one of the reasons why when you pray, you pray through Christ. Hallelujah. 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 So now Christ sat on that throne of judgment. And we shall address that in the book of Revelation 14. Instructions came from Christ. Trust the sickle. Read the earth. Because the vine is right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In essence, what that is telling us is that the day of judgment, this is what will happen. We are fast approaching the day of judgment. But we, those of us that have heard so many times that at the end times, these are part of the things that will happen. What changes are we making in preparation for that time? What are we doing to make sure that when Christ comes, we shall be part of those that will benefit from his kingdom? And I looked, behold, a white cloud, and upon a cloud, one sat like unto the Son of Man, having his head a golden crown, and his hand a sharp sickle. That is Christ. In preparation for judgment day. He went further to say, Another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice, to hear that sound, in a cloud. So now my understanding of that is that that angel was speaking to Christ. Not that the angel gave Christ instruction for Christ to use that um, sickle. But it is so prepared 
that Christ and with God, the, the angels that surround the throne of God, they walk in harmony. They walk in unity. So if we keep, if we go further, specific instructions were given as how this ought to be done. Every single day. We hear the world is coming to an end. The day of judgment is fast approaching. And signs have been given when the end times are approaching. It says nothing will increase. Aren't you going through that now? Yes. But we have been told about these end times. And the question now is, are we prepared for it? Hymn 554. Baba, I believe so. words in lyrics. The question is, are we already prepared to walk the walk? Are we ready to give up the physical things that are distracting us from being part of that kingdom? If only time permits, if you go further in the book of Revelation, the 15th chapter of that book explains the depth of the wrath of God, how angry God will be, and how much impact that wrath will have on us. My prayer is that the little that we are doing to please God because of the environment that we are in 
God should overlook all our shortcomings. Amen. Anything that will prevent us from entering the kingdom of God. I pray God to forgive us. Amen. And as this prayer is being said, we should also have in mind that we should not use our own hands to cause destruction for ourselves. Amen. Because it is very simple. The line that separates evil from righteousness is very thin. So many leaders in the Christian world had fallen because of a simple mistake. They have lost their glory because of simple mistakes. The God that we serve will constantly monitor our activities so that whatever that will cause us to deviate from Him, He will point us in the right direction at the right time. Amen. May the Lord be with us. Amen.